All right, for geometry, lesson 3.4, we're talking about parallel and perpendicular lines again, continuing. Um, and we've got some important theorems to discuss. So theorem 3.8 says that if A is parallel to B and B is parallel to C, then A has to be parallel to C. This reminds me of the law of syllogism, but all it's basically saying is that, hey, if these two are parallel and these other two are parallel, then all three of them are parallel to each other. 3.9 states that if M is perpendicular to T, so remember perpendicular means it creates 90 degree angles. They meet at a right angle. And then if N is perpendicular to T as well, then that means M and N are parallel to each other. So basically they're saying if T is a transversal that cuts both M and N into 90 degree angles, then M and N are parallel to each other. All right, and then in the last one for today, um, 3.10, this says that uh, it's the perpendicular transversal theorem. So if N is perpendicular to L, so N is a right angle with L, and L is parallel to M, these two are already marked up parallel like they are, um, then N is also perpendicular to M. So these two are very similar to each other. They're basically like the converse of each other. So um, if one is perpendicular and the other two lines are parallel, then the other one is also perpendicular to the parallel line. All right, knowing that, um, let's go ahead and try the next page where we've got a problem that says carpentry. So a carpenter plans to install molding on the sides and the top of a doorway. The carpenter cuts the ends of the top pieces. So he cuts the ends of the top pieces. And then one end of each of the side pieces at 45 degree angles as shown. Will the side pieces of molding be parallel? So will this side be parallel to this side if they are cut at 45 degree angles and the top was also already cut at 45 degree angles? So the answer to this one based on one of our theorems for today is yes. So this is going to get kind of wordy, but I hope it makes sense. I'm going to say something like um, when the pieces fit together, Okay, because we're talking about the degrees when they're going to fit together. So when the pieces fit together, they form 45 degrees plus 45 degrees, which if you can do the math of that, that would be 90 degrees angles. Okay, that would be 90 degree angles. So each side is perpendicular, I'm going to use this symbol for perpendicular, it's like an upside down capital T, to the top. All right, and then uh, we know from our theorem that if two lines, which would be the sides, I'm sure you know this, but just for clarity, the sides are perpendicular to the same line. which obviously that same line I'm talking about would be the top. Then, I've run out of room, so I'm gonna have to go over here. Then they are parallel. I'm gonna do the do two double lines for parallel to each other. Okay, again, a little wordy, but I hope it makes sense based on our theorems that we just learned today. All right, the next part says, can you assemble the pieces here at the right to form a picture frame with opposite sides parallel? So can you put these together to make a picture frame? Obviously, this would be like top, side, top, bottom, other side, to form a picture frame with opposite sides being parallel. So here's what I hope you guys know that 30 each plus 60 each would add up to 90 so we are gonna say yes again that um, <clears throat> basically it's gonna be the same explanation as up here 60 degrees plus 30 degrees equals 90 degrees which would form so that's a yes which would form 
perpendicular angles. And then one of the um, theorems we learned today is that, actually it's called the perpendicular, I'm, I'm abbreviating the perpendicular transversal, transversal theorem, THM is going to mean theorem for me, um, provides a way to conclude that lines are perpendicular. Okay. All right, we are going to wait to do proofs um, on our next page. So you can cross off the bottom two on this particular worksheet because we are going to do them now on the next page. So let's go to the next page, which is 3.4 practice. Um, this is a map. So this should look similar to a map that you guys have done recently. But a developer is planning a new housing complex. The map of the complex is shown at the right. Assume all streets lie in the same plane. So if Washington and Lincoln are to be parallel, what must be true of angle 1 and angle 2? So angle 1 and angle 2, they must be congruent. All right, what about B? Which streets must be parallel if angle three and angle four are congruent? So again, three and four would be alternate interior with the transversal here if these two streets are parallel. So those two streets are called, uh, I believe that's part of Washington. So Washington and J Washington Street and Jefferson Street. these two. Okay, um, part C, if the measure of angle 1, which is up here, is 90, which we can kind of assume it's 90, but now if it tells us it's 90, um, and your answers to parts A and B are true, so up here our, our answers are true, what roads is Eagle Road perpendicular to? So this would be perpendicular to Washington, to Lincoln, and also to Jefferson, since this would be our transversal, American Way is the transversal. So they would actually be perpendicular to Washington and Lincoln and Jefferson Street. All right. Um, talking about developing a proof, we're not doing a two-column proof yet. Um, we're just going to kind of uh, complete a paragraph proof, and it's just going to be filling in some gaps for now. So it says, um, in a plane, x is perpendicular to y, and y is parallel to z. Prove that x is perpendicular to z as well. So this basically just proves our whole theorem. Um, since y is parallel to z, the measure of angle 1 would be 90 degrees by the corresponding angles theorem. I'm abbreviating corresponding angles theorem. Okay, and then by definition of perpendicular lines, x would be perpendicular to z. Okay, hopefully you would have been able to fill that in. And now we're going to try a paragraph proof. And again, I'm going to abbreviate a bunch, so it's not going to be a full paragraph. But um, they are telling us, actually, you know what? We're not going to do three. I forgot. I'm sorry, because we did two, which is kind of the same thing. There's not enough room, really, to write out three. But we are going to look at four. A classmate drew this cube over here at the right. He said that according to the perpendicular transversal theorem, AB, segment AB, is parallel to segment CD since they are both perpendicular to BC. So yes, these are perpendicular, and yes, these are perpendicular, but based on the perpendicular transversal theorem, why is this not then perpendicular, sorry, parallel to this? And the answer is because theorem 3.9 states that lines to be, per, to be parallel must be in the same plane. So segment, I'd put something like segment AB and segment CD are in different planes. 
And remember, they would have to be in the same plane for this to be true. So instead of perpendicular, sorry, instead of parallel, they are skew, if you remember that. All right.